So we've talked about what are the major components of the Raman spectrometer. We looked at the laser, the coupling optics, drew that on the earlier uh, session. Well, what I want to now do is look at the detectors that are used in the Raman spectrometer. Classically, the very first one that was used was a photographic plate. And the photographic plate is just that. It was a photographic plate or a piece of film. The Raman signal would be spread out over the surface. You'd get a series of lines on the photographic film when you developed it, and that was your detector. That worked really well. It was sensitive, but unfortunately, it's not something you could use in a high speed or a kinetic situation. You couldn't read it repeatedly, so it had a limited lifetime. The next detector to come along, and the one that really made Raman practical in a laboratory setting, was the photomultiplier tube. In a photomultiplier tube, you had, it was a vacuum tube, basically it was what it was. It would sit down and it would have these pins on the back and it would just plug into something. And that photomultiplier tube has in it a series of plates. And the photon would come in and strike that first plate. And when it did, it would cause an electron to sputter. Let's draw the electron in a different color. Let's draw that bright color red. So the electron would come off and it would move down and it would hit the next plate. And that next plate was at a higher voltage, so when that electron struck that plate, I would end up with a bunch of electrons coming off. And then I have another plate, and then coming off of that one, I would have even more electrons. And by the time I got to the bottom, I would have just a crescendo of electrons. And then we had a preamp, which would isolate this system, and then we would have a photon counter. They would detect whenever packets of photons arrived. So I would scan, I would stop, and I would let my photon counter count. Scan, stop, photon counter count. Highly sensitive, but not really very fast, because it's a single point, meaning I can't do an array of photomultiplier tubes, or at least they never did. The photomultiplier tube was a single point, single uh, spectrum at a time. All of that really changed, and surge to the forefront with the charge couple device detectors coming online. What a charge couple device detector is, is a solid state system consisting of a series of wells, electronic wells on the surface, not to get into the electronics of how any of this works or anything, but just we'll call them wells. And then when a photon arrives in a particular well, an electron would get promoted and we would begin to fill up that well. And if no electrons arrived, the well would just have a dark current, a low amount of signal. But then the wells would build up. Then what we would do is we would close the shutter and we'd send in a read pulse, which would drain the wells and count the number of electrons that each well had in it. So each one of these would have a wire attached to it. That wire would drain the well, make sure it was ready to go for the next one, and then um, the cycle would repeat. So we'd have a shutter, open, shut, open, shut, open, shut, or something like that. Um, in later iterations, you didn't have to have a shutter. You would just keep reading the CCD as you scan. Okay, so this is a multi-channel detector, similar to the photographic plate. The light would spread out over the surface of the detector, give you multi-channel detection quite sensitive, quite good. It's basically the same thing that's in your cell phone camera, the CCD, uh, basically, but obviously a little more advanced, a little more sophisticated electronics behind it. A relatively newer development in the field are electron multiplied CCDs. Basically, this takes the idea of a photomultiplier tube where a single electron being promoted generates a crescendo an electron multiplied charge couple device. So the electron, as it's boosted out of that first state into that well, generates a signal that then generates a crescendo of electrons down that channel, allowing a single channel to be very, very sensitive, 
but more importantly, to respond very quickly to low light levels. So as a low number of photons arrive, that low photon is then enhanced and given an increased signal level. There is some confusion in the field as to whether or not an EMCCD is inherently more sensitive than a CCD. The answer is it depends upon your experiment. If your experiment is a single point scanning experiment where you're going to scan, stop, and collect data over a single point, a CCD is perfect for that. The EMCCD is heavily used in high speed imaging purposes. The EMCCD, by the nature of the way it works, is able to, as I said, collect that low light signal, amplify it, and then you can read it very quickly, allowing vendors to provide, as we do with our uh, thermoscientific DXR XI imaging microscope, upwards of 600 or more spectra in one second. That's the key for the EMCCD. It is used to allow you to collect a lot of spectra in a hurry so that you can image. And in the, uh, again, referring to the uh, DXRXI microscope, the stage never stops. It actually continuously scans while the EMCCD is clicking away and collecting that data so that you can collect it at this speed, 600 per, spec uh, per second and then co-add them to build up that image. So these are the four different kinds of detectors that, that have been used. As I said, the top two are mostly historical. There are still good systems built using photomultiplier tubes, and there's still research going on into the improvement of photomultiplier tubes. But the majority of the interest now is in the multi-channel systems, the CCD and the EMCCD. And so it's, there's a price jump going from here to here. The question really for you as a user is whether or not you need this or not, whether or not you're doing imaging. If you're really interested in mapping where you can get by with a slower speed, say 10, 20, 30 spectra second, then the CCD is just fine. That's good enough. If you need to cover a lot of ground or you're looking for homogeneity in a pharmaceutical tablet or something, that's where the EMCCD really, really shines. So, some idea of the detectors. So we've now covered the different lasers we have, all the different frequencies. We've talked about the filters. Back in an earlier talk, we've talked about the detectors now. That pretty much covers the whole instrument. So now we'll look a little bit more at the sample and then uh, we'll actually show you some images of the spectrometer in the lab.